pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, City Council, Mayor Burcroft, City Treasurer's absent, and our Deputy Clerk and Audience. Today is Monday, July 2nd, 2019, and this is the City of Romulus City Council regular meeting. This time we will have roll call. Councilwoman Abdo. She's excused. Okay. We have uh, Councilman Barton. Here. Councilwoman Roscoe. Here. Councilwoman Talley. Here. Councilman Wadsworth. Here. Councilwoman Webb. Here. And Councilwoman Williams. Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Council, we have before you an amended agenda, which is as follows. Number one, agenda. Number two, minutes. Number three, petitioner. Number four is chairperson's report. Number five is mayor's report. Six, a, clerk's report. Six, B is the treasurer's report. Public comment, eight is unfinished business, nine is new business, ten is communication, and number 11 is adjourned. For the record, the amendment to the agenda um, are the um, agenda items 5B and 6A1. So a motion will be in order to accept the amended agenda as presented. So move to accept the amended agenda as presented. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Talley, supported by Ms. Roscoe, to accept the amended Agenda as presented. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Chair votes yes. Agenda approved. 2A, for approval are the minutes from the regular council meeting held on June 25th, 2018. So move for approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting held June 25th, 2018. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Webb, for approval of the minutes from our regular council meeting, which was held June 25th, 2018. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Stayed. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Agenda item 2B, for approval of the minutes from the public hearing that was held on Monday, June 25th, 2018, regarding the demolition list 18-01. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion for approval of the minutes from the public hearing held on Monday, June 25th, 2018, for the demolition list 18-01. Support. The motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Talley, for approval of the minutes from the public hearing held on Monday, June the 25th, 2018, for demolition list 18-01. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Abstain. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. There are no petitioners this evening. Number four is the chairperson's report. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I, the chair doesn't have any reporting to do. He just wanted to recognize Councilman Wadsworth. Um, thank you, Mr. Barton. Uh, I'd like a memorial resolution for um, Donald R Robert Flood, and I'll expand if somebody supports Support. it. Uh, Don, um, Don Flood passed away on June the 24th at the, at the age of 88. He was the, um, he was the first Romulus police chief in 1982, um, and um, he came into a uh, situation that, that that was not very easy to handle, but he did a, he did an excellent job. He was uh, married to his wife Norma for 63 years. They had they had two children. They had um, three three um, grand, three grandchildren. Um, Don served in the Air Force during the Korean War, <clears throat> and when he came back home, he became a lieutenant in the Michigan State Police, and when he retired in 1981, he, he uh, came here to the uh, city of Romulus. Uh, following his retirement from uh, from Chief of Romulus, he became a licensed realtor, and he played softball until he was 78 years old, and he enjoyed playing golf. The, the, there'll be visitation this coming Friday, June the 6th, at the Grace Lutheran Church, which is located on Grand River, just east of Beach Daily. Um, and he'll be in turn at the Glen Eden Cemetery. Uh, my new, uh, my new chief flood quite well. 
He was a man of integrity, and he was a, really was a good cop, and may he rest in peace. Okay. The motion was made by Mr. Wasser, supported by Mr. Webb, for memorial resolution. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. And through the chair, if I may? Yes, I'd Ms. Like Webb. I'd like to uh, request a memorial resolution for Mr. David White, Sr. Mm -hmm. Support. Thank you. Mr. White and his wife, Selena, lived in my neighborhood. They moved to Romulus in 1965. And they raised their three sons and two daughters, Corzell, Carl, David Jr., Deborah, and Sharon. And you're talking about a wonderful family. They just, they helped everyone in the neighborhood. We were at the services today, and I was also at the viewing. I've, there were so many people at that viewing because all of their children graduated from Romulus schools. And it was, it was something to see how their children, especially Corzell, who lives in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, how they have just, they are just a pillar of, of their communities because they were raised by good parents. And that's something that we all need today. And he and his wife, Selena, were married 69 years. Wow. Right. Awesome. Yes, if I could just to add on to that, I want to thank uh, Councilman Webb for notifying my office of that. Thank you. And uh, um, I couldn't attend the service today, but we did send representation. But as she said, I got to echo great family, just great family, good people, uh, <coughs> truly missed. And uh, just please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Okay. Motion made by Ms. Webb, supported by Mr. Wadsworth. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. That concludes the chairperson's report. Chair, I'll make a motion to accept your report. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Talley, to accept the chairperson's report. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Williams? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved, thank you. Number five is the mayor's report. Good evening, city council, clerk, deputy clerk, and audience. Uh, quote I brought tonight ties into our, uh, our big holiday on the 4th, and it goes as this. This nation will remain the land of the free only so long as it is the home of the brave. And that's very true. Uh, you know, we enjoy this time, and we're having picnics and pool parties and all these uh, fireworks and in social time, but we can't forget that it's the uh, the birth date of the best uh, democratic process in the world, which is the United States of America. Um, we had a busy week last week. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, our sponsor. We had fireworks again this year. Uh, I wanted to thank our um, police department, fire department, DPW. Uh, we had CERT uh, program folks out there. The schools cooperated. Great community effort. Uh, our sponsor uh, was Mike Coza, who has the airline uh, parking, Quick Park, uh, Park and Go, and some hotels and other businesses. But we could not uh, provide a nice show with fireworks without the sponsor. So I want to definitely, even though they don't ask for the recognition, let them know that we really do appreciate uh, Mike Coza and his team stepping up. Uh, we have a short video clip with some of the other activities going on. So if we could run that, please. Here are some events coming up. City offices will be closed on Wednesday for the July 4th holiday. Normal business hours will resume on Thursday. The farmer's Market is underway and will run through September the 26th. It's located near the pavilion in the historical park in downtown Romulus and is on Wednesdays. This coming Saturday, July the 7th, the Romulus Historical Society annual flea market will be held from 8 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. It will be held in the pavilion at the historical park. Monday the 9th, Build with Legos at 1 p.m. at the library. The next sounds in downtown will be Friday, July the 13th with the Scott Martin Band, Reliving the 90s. And on Friday the 27th, a tribute to Journey by the band Infinity and Beyond. The next movie in the park will be Friday, July the 20th. The featured presentation will be the animated movie Coco. 
The Relay for Life will pink out the Mud Hens on Friday, July the 20th. They'll take a bus to Toledo for a fun night at the park. The Hens opponent will be, and I'm not making this up, the Iron Pigs. It's the Phillies' top farm team. To find out more about all of our community events, go to the locations noted on your screen. Dennis. Um, now for my um, action items. Really, I just have two. Uh, the first one that, that's before you is item A. Uh, it's a recommendation that came from uh, Bob McCrate and Lynn Conway, uh, and this is to concur with the administration and approve the amend the city's existing contract with George Ock. Uh, the amount totaling one million seven forty nine three sixty five, and that's for the subcontracted trade work of a million five twenty three eight forty five and testing allowances reimbursable general conditions and any contingencies for unseen conditions the additional two hundred and twenty five thousand five hundred and twenty uh, the amendment is bid package number two uh, it's primarily for foundation steel elevator phase of the construction uh, Abby Atkins has uh, verified and, and says available the funds in the court building construction account that's listed so moved, uh, Mr. Chairman for EB bid uh, 17 slash 18 dash 51 for the 34th court and I have a question. Support. It's been motioned by Mr. Waffer, supported by Ms. Webb, and this is for the ITB 17 18 dash 51 new 34th district court bid package number two foundation steel and elevator. Mr. Waffer. And the question would be uh, to, to the mayor to Bob. This is in budget. There's no, no increase in cost at all. Correct. Bob, yeah. No, there's no increase to the total on the project. This is just a bid pack number two. So you see the utility work going on over there. Uh, the next phase will be the uh, foundation footings, get those in and some vertical construction, steel walls. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Do you have both yes, motion approved. Thank you, Council. And the second item ties to that because the work will be done in this budget year. Uh, so item B is a um, basically a budget amendment, and it's to concur the administration introduced budget amendment to reallocate funds from the fiscal year 17-18 into the 18-19 budget uh, for the account, and that's also ties to the 34th District Court project that you just approved. So moved. Support. Been motion by Ms. Webb, supported by Ms. Roscoe. This is for the introduction of Budget Amendment 18-19-01, Court Building Construction Fund. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Do you have votes? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. That concludes my report. Thank you. 6A is the clerk's report. I only have one item under the clerk's report, and that's 6 one Um... We have a study session request from the DPW Director Roberto Scapatici, um, and this is for July 9th, 2018, at o'clock, and this is to discuss the SAW grant proposal. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion for a study session requested by the DPW Director for July 9th, 2018, at 7 o'clock, to discuss the SAW grant proposal. Support. The motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Talley, for a study session request from our DPW director for July 9, 2018, at 7 p.m., to discuss the SAW grant proposal. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. And for your information, um, Council, we provided a notice from. Um, uh, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans regarding the Woodland Meadows um, RDF uh, Van Buren, and uh, so you have a notice uh, from them. And before I close out my report, Mr. Chair, if I can, I'd like to talk about the upcoming election. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so this is election time, August 8th. It, I'm sorry, August 7th. It's the primary election, and there's a couple things I just want to bring to your attention regarding the ballot for this upcoming election. Uh, last week, we mailed out all of the um, AV uh, ballots for those who requested absent, uh, absent voter ballots. Um, there's still time. If you would like an absent voter ballot and you have not received it, please contact the clerk's office. 
Um, if you have received your absentee ballot, and then for those that are headed to the polls on the 7th, I want to talk a little bit about the ballot. This is a sample ballot here. As you can see, it's a very long ballot with a lot of space. Um, it's going to be very important that you turn the ballot over. So those of you that are maybe working with uh, groups and seniors and different ones, it's important that you turn that ballot over. Um, we do not uh, print the ballots. They're printed through Wayne County, and the printer that works with Wayne County, this is, you know, what, what we get is what we get, and it's coming from Wayne County here. So it's really, really important that that ballot is turned over. Um, also, a couple of other things on the primary election, um, this is straight party voting. Okay, uh, this time around we have Republican, Democrat, and the Libertarian Party. So you must vote straight party. If you cross um, uh, party votes, your ballot will be spoiled. Um, if you make a mistake, if you're at home watching, you make a mistake on your ballot, please contact us and um, so that we can make arrangements to get that ballot spoiled and reissue another ballot. But we must have that spoiled ballot first before reissuing another ballot. So just give us a call and we will work with you. Um, also, on the ballot, it's a little bit confusing here. Um, as you know, uh, Congressman Conyers uh, retired um, the earlier part of this year, and so his seat is vacant. Um, so it uh, expires on uh, January the 3rd, 2019, and so his seat needs to be filled. So on the ballot, you're going to have representative in Congress 13 district partial term, which ends January 3rd, 2019. Now there are four candidates that's on that section of the ballot. Okay, so you're only voting for those individuals for a partial term. Now just above it though, Still, that seat will have to be filled beginning in January. So this is the representative of in Congress, the 13th district. And there are six candidates. Now you're going to see some of the same names repeated twice. We had some calls on that and it's very confusing. So there are four candidates <coughs> that's listed twice in that section. So you're going to be voting for a candidate to uh, uh, fulfill the remainder of that term. Uh, uh, former Congressman John Conyers' term, and then you will be voting for a candidate to start a new term uh, beginning in January. So another confusing part of your ballot is that we have a candidate that's actually listed three times. So that candidate is listed as a Democrat, and then there's another candidate that's listed as a Republican with the same name. So they are two different people, and I don't want to say the names anybody think I'm, I'm advocating for a candidate, but you'll notice your ballot. You're going to see a candidate listed three times, one as a Democrat and one as a Republican. I, we've confirmed that they are two different people. So that's really, really important. If you're not sure, please give us a call. Um, also on the ballot, you will have, uh, there are two proposals. We have the Wayne County Public Transportation Millage, and we have the Romulus Community School Sinking Fund uh, Millage proposal. So if you have questions concerning your ballot, please, please give us a call. Um, what our elections clerk, her name is Bobby Marcel, really sweet young lady. Her number is 734 955 Four, one. Um, and again, any questions? We are very short on sample ballots. Um, they didn't provide us with uh, many sample ballots. So we're running short. We're making copies of those ballots. Um, it's really hard to make copies. So we're going to have to, we're trying to get really creative with making copies and saving paper and things. So um, again, not to be redundant, but on your state elections, um, the ballot is put together and printed through Wayne County. So um, again, any questions, please give us a call. Again, our number is 
888-888-4541 and we will answer any questions we can and if you need them we're copying them if you need some um some sample ballots give us a call and we will copy them for you we're in the process of updating our website with all of our current um, election information so please be patient with us there's a lot of information that we've got to get on that website so um, but it will be updated by the end of this week thank you and that concludes the clerk's report thank you madam clerk um, Let's see, next on the agenda, say treasurer's report, but our city treasurer's not here this evening, and that leads us to agenda item number seven, public comment. And this is a portion of our agenda um, set aside for individuals who would like to address city council. Um, please raise your hand, and when recognized by the chair, approach the podium and state your name and address. Remarks shall be limited to three minutes. <laughs> and this is subject, <laughs> you're subject to being extended an additional three minutes, and that's only by the consent of the chairperson. There shall be no personal attacks, and remarks shall not contain any profanity, racial, ethnic, sexual, or national origin slurs or overtone. Anyone not adhering to this rule shall lose his or her right to address city council. A response to any of your questions or concerns will be provided under agenda item number eight, unfinished business. And that's only if the information is available at this time. Otherwise, your responses will require further, any responses that require further um, investigation will be given at a later date. And Mr. Chair, Council, we do have one request this evening, okay. and that's from John Nichols. Mr. Nichols, they're not here. Okay, that was the only written request. Okay, any other public comments from the audience? Yes, uh, Barry, good to see you, Barry. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Barry Bowman, Ramless. Um, I've debated many times this week whether or not to come here tonight and to give my opinion, and um, I guess I, I have to. I've been watching council meetings for a long time now, and uh, you know some of the activities going on here kind of rub the nerves. So I think I have to come and uh, actually defend the council and administration in one regard, and that would be over the landfill issue. Um, I watched his accusations were swung around last week. Um, and had I been able to get up here with, by the time public comment would have ended, I would have been here. Um, I think council person Talley was well within her right to be offended. I think that's a little bit too strong of a word, but I, I would, had I been sitting up there, I would have been put off by some of the comments as well. Um, I've lived where I've lived on the between Cogswell and Hannon off of Ecorse for 24 years now, and that landfill has been my neighbor. Um, I've seen it expand slightly over the years, and I have. I'm not here to defend waste management, but uh, I can count on my one hand the number of times I've <coughs> smelled it. Um, the only aggravating part about it is when there's high winds, there's uh, the garbage that's blown all over. You could drive down Hannon Road and you could see the piles and piles of garbage that have blown off the top of the hills and also along Hannon Road and also in the trees there's the plastic bags. But I have to give kudos to waste management because within three or four days it's all cleaned up just like it was before. Um, so I don't know where the hostility was uh, regarding that, but um, it was meant that was mentioned. Another thing that was mentioned was that Waste Management bought the golf, golf course. The uh, golf course is owned by Waste Management. It has always been owned by Waste Management. When I uh, bought my home over there, as they were developing the uh, golf course, I went to work for it's called the American Golf Corporation. I bartended part-time um, when I worked for the county. And I did that for about five, six years. It's always been in the master plan. 
that was uh, developed with Van Buren Township uh, that that golf course was to be uh, eliminated and the golf, the um, East management was going to develop the rest of it as a landfill. Um, <clears throat> another thing they said, uh, a speaker said, was that you guys were underhanded and that uh, Rizzo was already in jail to prove it. Uh, Rizzo doesn't have anything to do with waste management, first of all. They're two different separate companies. Waste management is waste management. Rizzo was with Rizzo Environmental, which is now GFL. Um, the, the original agreement was with Van Buren when that uh, landfill was, uh, was uh, initiated way back when, years and years ago. What happened was that they've come to an agreement with Van Buren over different, different things like free, uh, free pickup for Van Buren residents, you know, the monetary considerations just like the landfill in Carleton Farms gives money to Sumter every year. Um, the issue at hand now was the amendment to an agreement that uh, Van Buren had. It's been in negotiation for three, four years, and um, it was just recently approved in December by the Van Buren Township Board. Um, like I said, I, this has been an interest to me because it's right across the street from me. I'm not two miles down or a mile and a half down from the landfill. It's right across, directly across the street from where I live. So I've been watching this very carefully for the last couple of years. Um, and so that gives you a little insight. Uh, you had nothing to do with it. And um, so I'm defending, you know, you guys. <laughs> that, that's why you weren't, didn't know anything about it because you didn't have anything, you didn't have any say in it. The, the postcards that were sent out, I got one, and you know, people didn't care. And the way that I know people didn't care is because when we go to our uh, community mailboxes, we have two garbage cans, one on each side. And you know, these green cards were all in the um, waste baskets, so nobody, at least in the 690, I shouldn't say nobody, I said a good amount of people didn't care, you know, uh, which didn't surprise me, but yet surprised me because, you know, I sat there watching some people as they went through their mail and tossed the, the garbage in the bag. Um, so anyway, I, I thought I would give you a little bit of the uh, background into that. Another thing is, um, you know the shopping. Uh, the comment about the shopping. You know, you know, citizen after citizen comes up here and says, you know, we don't have a grocery store. We don't have this. We don't have that. You know, if if I had a dollar for every person I've talked to in the last few years about the grocery store being closed, I could have built a super Kmart there or super Walmart. You know. The reason why it's closed is nobody shopped there, you know. And one of the one of the uh, speakers last week said we don't have a grocery store, we don't have a CVS or Rite Aid. We do have a CVS, you know. It's right downtown, and you know I'm surprised that uh, CVS hasn't sent out notices. You know, I mean it's good marketing to to send out. I was just in CVS tonight before I came to the meeting buying stuff. And, you know, I think I was, there were three people in there. You know, we've got to support the local business if we want them to succeed, you know. And, um, you know, it, it's not the council. I sat on council. We had project after project after project that, you know, was being developed and, you know, potentially being developed, you know, and it all fell through, all fell through. You know, we had Eastern Michigan, you know, we had Eastern Michigan going over there where the casino was supposed to go. You know, it was that close from being approved. You know, the, the golf course and the conference center that Eastern Michigan had. You know, but politics entered it. Gary Owens, the state rep at that time, who was also the ma uh, majority leader, caught wind of what was going on. And Merrimack and I came that close of getting it over there. 
And I can go on with project after project, you know, that, that was supposed to go over there. And it's not, it's nothing that the city has done wrong. It's, it's just the economics tonight on the news. You know, Sears said that they're going to close the, um, uh, their Oakland mall branch, you know, store. And, uh, you know, because people are shopping online, you know. <laughs> so it's nothing that the city and residents have got to understand this. It's nothing that the city is doing wrong. It's just that, you know, times just aren't right at, you know, for development here at the, at the time, you know. We've lost, you know, just since I've been, you know, sitting on council, we lost the subdivision over there off of uh, Smith Road in Merriman. You know, how many homes did we lose there? You go down Wayne Road, we lost that whole area down there, down California Street. You know, we've lost so many homes. And, it, and of course, the, the economic times hasn't caught up with us. So, you know, it's not that you guys are doing anything wrong. It's just that, you know, Right now, time has passed roundless by, you know, and we have to just keep fighting and day by day, you know. And finally, one thing about Don Flood, you know, he was the first police chief. And um, that's my, during my first term is when we had to start the police department. And I always remember Don, he came back with Mayor Oakley and from Indiana, and they had just got the police cars. They weren't police cars, they were rental cars, right? That, yeah, they were rental cars. And we had to convert. I mean, we, Don Flood did a miraculous job in setting up the uh, Romulus Police Department, and he did a very good job. He was a good police chief. So I just want to give my kudos to Don, too. It's our, sad to hear he passed, but he was a very, very good man. And um, we have a lot of good stories about starting a police department. <laughs> We didn't even have a police, a police headquarters, you know, police department. So, God rest his soul. He was a good man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, Mr. Lemon. Good evening, everyone. Jan Lemon, lifetime resident of Romulus. Last week, I walked out of the council meeting. First time ever. I was appalled at the fact there were two gentlemen running around here taking pictures of whoever was at the podium. This is Romulus Council meeting, I believe, for council business and for residents to speak. This is an election year and it's going to get ugly. And I just hope every week we don't have a new politician coming up here from some other city. Let them get out in my community and knock on the doors if they want the vote. Please don't take my council time. Thank you. Mr. Barton? Yes, um, sir. Just, just a quick comment. Uh, you know, I served my first two terms with Barry Bowman out there. And Barry, it was a pleasure when you were up here. You were very a professional. Thank you. Yes, uh, Ms. Webb. Yeah, I've known Barry for a very, very long time. We've had our heated discussions, but thank you for the history lesson. Um, I feel personally that sometimes residents get a little bit upset because they've not been informed. So I appreciate you coming up and giving us that history of uh, what happened, as well as when the commons and the other uh, subdivisions were built, it was not council's place to inform the purchaser of, of those homes, it was the realtor. And, and I appreciate you coming to bat for us. As far as um, the grocery store, while you know, we stopped shopping there, well, it was not a nice place to shop, and I'll just leave it at that. But yes, I do hope that we will be able, in the very, very near future, have a, a grocery store for the residents. And thank you again, Barry. Any other comments from the audience? Madam Clerk, we'll close that part out. Thank you. 
Uh, number eight is unfinished business. Yes, Ms. Talley. And I, too, I was waiting for unfinished business. I didn't know if we could do it on the con But, Mr. Berry, I want to thank you for your comments. Um, very, like you said, very professional. And, um, and thank you for your comments to me because um, I will, I'm very passionate about Romulus. Um, and so um, sometimes I can come off abrasive, but that's not my way. But so thank you for that. And thank you for your history, the education, being a new council person, just good information and education. And it's been um, surrounded by a good group of administration, um, council people up here that's helping me along the process. So and just residents, just helping us been here and know, understands. The, 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 the dynamics of our city. So thank you so much for coming up and making those comments. They're much appreciated. Number nine is new business. Number 10 is communication. And I would just like to um, say pertaining to what the residents are asking for, as taxpayers, they have a right to. They have a right to demand and ask for the different businesses to come into the city where they can spend their money here in this city instead of going to other neighboring cities and help building them up. Rumpus is a very unique city. The airport, the only major airport in Michigan sits in the middle of us. So it's no reason why we can't put our heads together to build our city as Belleville has built their city, Van Buren and other cities. So, you know, in the defense of the residents complaining about having stores, somewhere to shop, somewhere to eat other than what we have already, they have a right to because they are taxpayers. And so we have to listen to them. And we have to try to come up with solutions to bring those different businesses here, other than the businesses uh, that we already have. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any more communication? Number 11 is adjournment. So moved. Support. It's been motioned by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Roscoe for a joint adjournment. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>